Hi, now I've got another example here which you might like to try. I'm assuming that you've been watching the earlier videos in this series on modeling curves and converting them to linear form. If not, do go back and look at that earlier tutorial on my website. So with this example, which you might like to try, we've got this data in this table here. And if you were to sketch this out, you'd find that you get a curve something like this. And that curve's going to have the form, say, y equals ax to the power b, where a and b are constants. And what we've got to do is try and find those constants a and b. So if you'd like to give this a go, and you've watched that earlier tutorial, then just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, do fast forward just to check out your answer. Or if you need further help, I'm going to take you slowly through the method and work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's see how we get to work out these values of A and B. Well, the first thing we need to do is try and transform this to a linear form and we can do that by taking logs to both sides. And you can take logs in any base as I've shown you in the earlier videos. So I'm going to choose to take logs to base 10 to both sides. So that will be this line here where we've got log of y equals the log of ax to the power b. Now I'm going to split this up by using the addition rule. We've got a times x to the power b. So that's going to be the same as the log of a plus log of x to the power b. And then we use the power rule to bring this b to the front of the log x. So if you do that, and I've also rearranged the terms, we've got it equals b times log of x plus log a. And what this means is that this is now in the form of y equals mx plus c, where we've got y equaling the log y, that's a variable quantity, and we've got the x being the same as log x, that's a variable quantity, and then we've got the two constants, m being equivalent to the b here, and the constant c being equivalent to the constant log a. So y equals mx plus c. So that means that if we were now to plot y against x, where y is the log y and x is the log x, we should get a straight line. But first of all, we need to form a table of the values of log x and log y. So I'm going to put it underneath this table here. And if you were to do that, for instance, the log of 2 turns out to be 0 0.30 to two decimal places. And the log of 0 0.37 turns out to be minus 0 0.43 to two decimal places. And you've got similar results for the x and y values that you see here. OK, now we need to think about plotting these values. So if you draw up some axes on a piece of graph paper, something like this, I've got my log x and my log y axis. And if I put in these points here, then you should find that they turn out to lie in a straight line. And you can see that this line is decreasing, okay, as log x increases. And if we now draw a line of best fit through those points, it's going to look, say, something like this. And from this, we can get the intercept here with the log y axis. And reading from this graph, it seems to look like it's 0.26. So that means that our C value here, which is the equivalent of log A, is going to be equal to 0.26. And to get the value of A, I just anti-log both sides. 
This is to the base 10, so A will be equal to 10 to the power 0 0.6. And if you work that out, you should find you end up with 1.8 to one decimal place. Now, as for B, that's equivalent to M, the gradient. And we can find the gradient just by drawing a triangle anywhere on this between, say, two points on the line of best fit. I've chosen this triangle in here. And I can see that as we go 0.2 units in this direction, the Y value goes down by 0.46 units. So be careful here. We've got a decrease, a negative here, of 0.46 units for an increase of 0.2 units in this direction. But you could also just take your two points and just do the difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates. And whatever you do, you should find out that that gradient turns out to be equal to minus 2.3. And that's our B value. So our A value is 1.8, one decimal place, and B is minus 2.3. So we can put that together and we can say that the equation of this curve is going to be Y equals 1.8x to the power minus 2.3. So I hope you're able to get that right. If not, at least being able to see how to do it. So thanks for watching and hopefully if you want any further support in any other topic, you'll find it on my website.